Starship Block 2 once again came spinning down from the sky, but this time, a lot of things were different. Join me today as we break down what really happened during Starship Flight 9. First, let's roll it back just a few minutes before the ship took off. At T-40 seconds, the countdown was put on hold. However, this wasn't due to an issue with the Starship or the Super Heavy Booster itself. It was related to a ground systems check. It could have involved the Water Deluge system or the launch tower. Not long after, the SpaceX commentator clarified that the problem was with the Quick Disconnect Mechanism, known as the Ship Quick Disconnect Arm, which connects the tower to Starship. This arm supplies fuel and electrical connections to the upper stage. Fortunately, the issue seemed like it wasn't serious, and shortly after, the countdown resumed and the vehicle prepared for launch. At liftoff, all 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy Booster ignited successfully, lifting SpaceX's massive Starship off the pad. Just over a minute later, the vehicle passed through Max Q, the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the rocket. At around T plus 2 minutes and 35 seconds, most of the booster's engines shut down, leaving just three center engines running to prepare for stage separation. Right after that, Starship's second stage ignited its six Raptor engines, including three sea-level Raptors and three vacuum-optimized ones. We were also treated to a clean and precise flip maneuver by Super Heavy as it began its return to Earth. Unlike previous flights, this time the booster did not attempt a return to the launch site. Instead, it aimed for an ocean landing. On the way down, Super Heavy performed a flawless boost back burn, followed by a successful hot stage jettison. What many viewers might have missed is that the booster was descending much faster than usual. SpaceX intentionally increased its angle of attack to test re-entry dynamics under higher stress. During this process, we can see the engine bay glowed red hot due to aerodynamic heating. Currently, the booster uses an ablative coating for protection, but future versions will replace this with metallic heat shield tiles for greater reusability. A little over six minutes into the flight, the booster attempted to ignite 13 of its engines for the landing burn, but it failed. A brief explosion was visible, and telemetry was lost immediately afterward. While disappointing, this failure was expected. SpaceX was deliberately pushing the limits of a previously flown booster to gather data under extreme conditions. As Dan Hute, SpaceX webcast host, put it, We've done this in computer modeling. It shows that sometimes the control isn't great, but there's only one way to really prove it out, and that's to get real-world data. Okay, while it's definitely interesting to dig into the booster explosion more, let's shift our focus to the real star of this flight, the Starship itself. During this mission, we got a rare look inside the engine bay. At first glance, it looked like the engines weren't firing, but that was simply because they were burning so cleanly that the plume was barely visible. However, on the vacuum engine to the right, there was a concerning hotspot glowing red. That is not ideal especially since a similar issue appeared in a previous flight, and we all remember how that ended. Despite the concern, cheers erupted from SpaceX employees as Mission Control confirmed that Starship had successfully shut down all six of its engines and was following its intended flight path. Right after the final three sea-level Raptor engines cut off, a brief flame was visible near the ship's skirt. But overall, Starship performed significantly better than in previous Block 2 attempts. The vehicle continued to make steady progress, coasting safely through space. However, several critical test milestones were still ahead. One major milestone was supposed to be a demonstration deployment of simulated Starlink satellites. Unfortunately, that did not happen. According to SpaceX's Dan Hute, a hatch on the side of Starship failed to fully open, preventing the release of a set of dummy satellites carried on board. These eight simulated payloads were meant to replicate the company's next generation of Starlink satellites and were intended to test how Starship might deploy actual cargo into orbit in future missions. This was not the first time SpaceX planned to test this feature. They had hoped to attempt it during the January and March flights, but those missions ended in explosions just minutes after launch. Even though the satellite deployment was unsuccessful today, Huat emphasized that the primary mission is still progressing and remains on track. 
He also said, Obviously, this is a test we want to be able to do before we're deploying full-on Starlinks. But the real focus for this, now that we are in space, is getting to that re-entry that is the most critical phase of Starship that we still have to prove out. And he is not wrong. Less than 30 minutes into the flight, the ship began showing signs of spinning. Dan Hoot announced that Starship had lost attitude control. This meant the vehicle would not be able to properly orient itself for re-entry, the phase of flight, where it dives back into Earth's dense atmosphere. That was not good news for the ship's chances of survival. It also meant canceling the planned in-space Raptor engine relight demonstration. It turns out the spacecraft experienced a leak in one of the internal fuel tank systems, significantly lowering the odds of a stable re-entry. In response, SpaceX chose to passivate the vehicle by venting the remaining propellant before re-entry. An intermittent video from Starship showed it beginning re-entry just over 40 minutes after launch. Any object returning to Earth from space at around 20 times the speed of sound will experience extreme physical forces. Temperatures during re-entry were expected to reach about 1,400 degrees Celsius or roughly 2,552 degrees Fahrenheit. During re-entry, plasma could be seen flowing around the ship's body. However, with heat shields installed only on the vehicle's belly, they were not enough to fully protect it during this uncontrolled descent. Soon after, most of the ship's flaps appeared to burn away. The intense heat buildup caused by atmospheric friction and pressure overwhelmed the structure. Although the video feed eventually cut out, this likely indicated that Starship broke apart during re-entry, with debris falling into the ocean. SpaceX has not yet revealed full details about the cause of the failure, but as always, Elon Musk offered a sneak peek. Posting on his social media platform X, he said, Starship made it to the scheduled ship engine cutoff, so big improvement over last flight. He also noted that Starship did not lose a significant number of heat shield tiles during ascent. These tiles are designed to protect the spacecraft as it re-enters Earth's atmosphere. However, Starship ultimately did not survive re-entry, the phase when those heat shield tiles are most critical. Leaks caused loss of main tank pressure during the coast and re-entry phase. Lot of good data to review, Musk stated. He also expressed optimism for the future of the program, saying he hopes SpaceX can rapidly increase the number of Starship test flights, with the next three missions planned to occur just three to four weeks apart. Jared Isaacman, whose nomination to be NASA Administrator is expected to be confirmed by the Senate as soon as next week, expressed his appreciation for SpaceX's decision to continue showing video footage from Starship as it began its uncontrolled re-entry. He wrote, Pretty incredible to get this kind of footage from the extreme environment of re-entry. Appreciate the transparency and bringing us space enthusiasts along through the highs and lows of a test program. Some may focus on the lows, but behind the efforts of Starship and other programs like New Glenn, Neutron, Vulcan, Terran, Stoke, etc., is a massive space economy taking shape. Tens of thousands of jobs, in billions in private investment, all aimed at truly opening the last great frontier. When these capabilities arrive, they will spearhead a new era of exploration and discovery, and the lows will become a chapter in a much longer story. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, which licenses commercial rocket launches, including SpaceX's Starship test flights, released a statement regarding tonight's mission. The statement reads, The FAA is aware an anomaly occurred during the SpaceX Starship Flight 9 mission that launched on Tuesday, May 27th from Starbase, Texas, and is actively working with SpaceX on the event. There are no reports of public injury or damage to public property at this time. Well, I guess one silver lining to repeated failures is that SpaceX is getting better and faster at handling the aftermath. So far, none of the failed Starship missions have resulted in reports of injuries or bodily harm. The only known incident occurred after the January explosion when a piece of Starship debris struck a car in South Caicos causing minor damage according to the FAA. Overall, Starship Flight 9 hit some pretty big milestones, even though it missed a few key test goals along the way. 
Liftoff was definitely a win. The Super Heavy Booster, which had already flown once before, fired up all 33 of its engines successfully. A lot of those engines were reused, which was a first for SpaceX with this type of booster. Now, the booster did end up crash landing, and SpaceX lost contact with it after it tried to fire its engines for a landing burn. If things had gone differently, we would have seen a really interesting engine test during landing. One of the three center engines was supposed to be turned off on purpose to see if a backup engine from the middle ring could take over. Then the booster would switch to just two engines for the final landing phase and shut down midair before splashing down in the Gulf of Mexico. SpaceX never planned to bring it back to dry land on this flight, so that part wasn't unexpected. On the bright side, the booster did separate cleanly from Starship, which kept flying, but the upper stage had issues too. It was supposed to deploy eight dummy satellites, but the side hatch didn't open all the way. Because of that, SpaceX couldn't test how Starship might drop off cargo in orbit someday. They also skipped the in-space engine relight test, and Starship didn't survive re-entry. That meant they also didn't get to test how the ship would perform with 100 heat shield tiles removed, or how the new metallic heat shield tiles would hold up. Still, there were some wins. SpaceX made a bunch of upgrades after the last flight. They added more preload on engine joints, a nitrogen purge system, and made improvements to how propellant is drained. And since Starship made it through the second engine cutoff this time, it looks like those fixes worked. So yeah, it wasn't a perfect flight, but it's progress. SpaceX is clearly learning fast, and the program is still moving forward. SpaceX says on their website, Developmental testing, by definition, is unpredictable. But by putting hardware in a flight environment as frequently as possible, we're able to quickly learn and execute design changes as we seek to bring Starship online as a fully and rapidly reusable vehicle. Now, Elon mentioned the next launch, Flight 10, could happen in just three to four weeks. Do you think that's too soon? Let me know what you think in the comments. Elon's known for being super optimistic with timelines, but honestly, this time, it feels like SpaceX might actually pull it off. We're on the road to 10,000 subscribers, so if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.